Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. My pleasure to be on. Texas has introduced some of the harshest abortion laws in the United States, and these laws restrict abortion or prevent abortions after six weeks and allow private citizens to sue anybody who's involved in, a, in an abortion. And Dr. Shabir, there are many people who, or many commentators who have said things like, you know, this is the Taliban in Texas, or this is the, you know, Sharia law has come to Texas. Um, so I wanted to take a moment, Dr. Shabir, to think about um, whether Islamic law has the same sort of restrictions on abortion as Texas has introduced, whether it's more flexible, whether it's more harsh. Um, how does Islamic law relate to the law in Texas? Mm -hmm. Actually, it's interesting that Islam follows a golden mean when it comes to this issue between, you know, saying no abortion altogether uh, or to say, yeah, free abortion, uh, regardless of any uh, consideration or consequence. Uh, so Islam takes the golden mean, the middle path here, by saying that, uh, yes, up to a certain uh, stage in the pregnancy, uh, abortions could uh, be uh, resorted to. Um, after a certain stage, then the baby becomes uh, more a living soul and, um, you know, we, we have to uh, go hands off. But even then, uh, if the, uh, to preserve the baby would mean a threat to the life of the mother, uh, then even at the later stage in pregnancy, uh, in order to preserve the life of the mother, one might have to, in this case, let the baby go. Uh, so, so there is some flexibility here in Islamic law, and in that case, Islamic law is, uh, it, it is the golden mean uh, between on the one extreme saying no abortions and on the other extreme saying uh, all abortions are fine. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Shabir, the, the Texas law bans abortions after six weeks. What does Islamic law say? Well, the, uh, for, in Islamic law, there is a distinction made between uh, the, the uh, pregnancy uh, of up to 120 days, and then after 120 days. Now, why, why do they make this uh, distinction? There is a hadith relating that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says that uh, the uh, embryo starts out as a, a drop of, of fluid, and that lasts for 40 days at that stage. And then for another 40 days, it becomes a thing that clings, an alaka in Arabic. And then uh, after another, uh, for another 40 days, it is a, a chewed lump. And then uh, after these three periods of 40 days, which now if you do the math is 120 days, then the angel is sent by God to blow the spirit into the, the, ch into the womb. Uh, so uh, from this, the Muslim scholars understand that at 120 days, this uh, becomes a new creation. In fact, there's the verse of the Quran in the 23rd chapter, uh, verses 12 to 16, that ends by saying that after these various stages, without giving the number of days for the stages, it says, Then we uh, shape him or, or develop him uh, into, or develop it, the embryo, into a new creation. So we understand that now this is where, where the human being actually starts, uh, a, a souled human being. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore, at this point, definitely uh, abortions are off limits, except if there uh, would be a real threat to the life of the mother, in which case they say we have to save the principal life um, and, and in this case let the, the secondary life go. And, and that doesn't mean that the baby is worth less as a human being, but what they're looking at is that the, the, the mother is already a live human being, whereas the baby, though alive at the moment, it still needs to come out into the world. And they know from experience, at the especially at this time, that uh, often a baby might you know, die during childbirth. Um, so there is a potential a child in the womb, um, like a potential live baby uh, into the world. Uh, but we have a, a already an existing live person in the world, so we have to save that one which is already existing uh, by sacrificing the one which is only a potential. Mm -hmm. Dr. Shabir, you know, the, the Texas law doesn't seem to um, make a distinction between pregnancies, let's say, that are a result of rape or incest um, and doesn't allow for abortion in those cases or even in the case of a severe de deformity, let's say a baby um, or a fetus doesn't have a brain, for example. 
um, it doesn't, it's not an emergency, right? It doesn't result in the woman, the, the pregnant woman dying or suffering in any way, but she knows that there's a baby inside her that has no uh, means of living, right? It can't survive and it will mm -hmm. probably eventually die in, inside her. Um, so what does Islamic law say about those situations, for example, um, pregnancy as a result of rape or incest or in a situation where uh, there's no future for that fetus? Mm -hmm. as, a, as a stepping stone to get to the, to the answer to that, let me, let me uh, say that the, the Quran condemns the killing of, of one's children. Uh, and this uh, is stated in at, at least two places in the, in the Quran, in, uh, in, in lists of laws. So in the sixth chapter of the Quran, the 151st uh, verse, it says, La taqtulu awladakum min imlaq. Do not uh, kill your children uh, out of poverty or due to poverty. Now, the explanation of this uh, in the context uh, and, and the historical situation is that uh, the, uh, the, the, sometimes the Arab peoples before Islam, they would kill a child, a, a real living baby. They would kill the, the, the living child uh, because they feel that they're not able to, uh, they don't have the means to take care of the child. Mm -hmm. And uh, this uh, statement, uh, this prohibition is repeated in the Quran in Surah 17 in the 21st verse. Uh, where it says, uh, uh, or the 31st verse rather, the 31st verse, where it says, La taqtulu awladakum khashyatu imlaq. Now, there's slight variation here. It says, do not kill your children for fear of poverty, which is interpreted by commentators to say that uh, you may not be poor at the moment, but you're afraid that you are going to be poor in the, in the future because of this child. But again, the, the idea is that people were killing their life children. Uh, there is also a statement that uh, the, the child who was buried alive, uh, and it's in, the fem it's in the feminine form here in Arabic, so this is interpreted by commentators to mean that there were uh, those who were burying their daughters alive. Mm -hmm. they, they, did not, they wanted male children, not females, mm -hmm. because females in that society was perceived by the men as a burden. Uh, whereas the boys could, expect, could be expected to grow up and be breadwinners and defenders of the tribe in battle and so on. Um, so the Quran is condemning all of this, but uh, th there is no clear uh, prohibition in the Quran dealing with abortion per se. Hmm. Uh, whereas we know that uh, abortions might have been done in simple ways uh, for a long time, uh, but, but it was not specifically condemned. One can only take the generality of the verses that I cited and say that since the uh, verses uh, prohibit killing your children, well, it, these verses prohibit abortion as well. But it is not as a stark a prohibition as if it was speaking directly about the actual issue of abortion. Because what we, what we derive by human inference is different uh, and, and of a different level uh, than, than a clear and explicit statement from God himself. So that's interesting. So the, when scholars are making fatwas about abortion, right, um, and they're passing legal rulings, then they're, they're just basing it on the Quranic ayahs that you mentioned and plus the hadith, which talks about the, the, the stages, the 40 stages, the, the three stages of 40. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. So now if one has uh, supreme confidence in the hadith, one would say that's a definite cutoff point. That's 120 days. And, and that's what the hadith says, and, and it must be so. Uh, one who is not so confident in, in, in the way in which hadith has been transmitted verbally uh, from one person to another until the hadiths were put into writing, and we know about variations in hadiths. Uh, so uh, one who is not so confident will say, okay, we can be a little bit flexible even about that 120 days uh, um, cutoff point. And, uh, and so we wouldn't treat it as a, such a, a definite cutoff point, in which case we have more of an opportunity to look at the kinds of cases that you mentioned. If, uh, if a baby is uh, you know, found to be, as you said, uh, without a brain, uh, or uh, sometimes you know, it is known that uh, the baby is, has a very good chance of being born uh, with something like uh, Down syndrome uh, or some other... Um, a condition that will uh, make it very difficult for the parents to bring up this child um, and, uh, and, and some other um, situations, then uh, one, one can consider whether 
it might be better to still, you know, bring up this child. Because some parents might say, look, I, I, it doesn't matter. This is my child. You say my child might be born with Down syndrome. It doesn't matter. Even if you're 100% sure that my child will be born with Down syndrome, that's still my, my baby and I still want this baby and, and I'll do what I can to bring up this baby. Another parent may say, well, look, if I have this child, then especially if the mother is young and is expected to have more children in the future, then if I try to be heroically uh, bring up this child, then that might take all my attention away from possible other children that I would have. And, and maybe that wouldn't be so fair to the other children. And so this is the decision that individuals will have to make. But uh, to give a blanket ruling for all situations and for all times, this may be too much. Because for a Muslim scholar to give such a blanket ruling, it has to be something that is very clearly stated by God in the Quran or clearly stated by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in a statement that is authentically attributed to him and so on. So we, we see then on the whole, um, in conclusion, I can say that uh, there is a great deal of flexibility, maybe not great deal. There is, there is flexibility mm -hmm. in, in the Islamic law. If, if, prior to 100, 120 days, there is a lot of more flexibility. Uh, still, it's, it's a weighty thing to take a life and the Quran uh, values life. The Quran says if you kill one human being, that's like killing uh, a whole people. Because uh, if you think about it, potentially the one human being could have many children and grandchildren, great grandchildren. So you're killing that, not only that person, but all of the potential people. So t think of it as a weighty matter. But prior to 120 days, because the soul has not been blown in according to traditional Islamic understandings, uh, there is a greater degree of flexibility. After 120 days, uh, there is less flexibility, but if the mother's life is in danger or if this baby, um, you know, is uh, uh, struck with some genetic deformity, then there is a possibility even then to abort uh, this, this child. Thank you for your time, Dr. Shibir. You're welcome. If you enjoyed this video, click like and subscribe. And please donate to support our work at QuranSpeaks.com.